My husband Rick and I came to Stokes County Schools in 1973 and we were teaching health and physical education. We made a deal with the, the classroom teachers that if they would let us work with their students extra, instead of them having to teach all of their classes a song to sing at the parent-teacher meeting, that we would do a gymnastic show. That's what we called it. We learned that this captured the imagination of our students and they loved working on these things. It gave our students an opportunity to see themselves as successful people that did exciting things that other people appreciated. And that's how it got started. When I was about 11, down at London School, we knew that PE was going to be a course that we'd take one day, you know, when we got older. And we were all excited about it. We thought we'd just be shooting basketball or going outside and playing some softball. And all of a sudden, there were these two new PE teachers. It was Rick and Jane, but we didn't call them that, you know, Mr. and Ms. Williams. And they came in and started teaching us stuff we'd only seen on TV when we watched the gymnastics. They were teaching us how to vault on the horse and, and do all these gymnastics floor routines. But the biggest thing that hit me about it, and I'm, this might make me cry, I hope not, but they took those of us who didn't realize we had any skills at all, except maybe we could shoot some good basketball hoops, but we didn't know we could do this other stuff. And they took us and believed in us and trained us to do things that we'd have never learned anywhere else in middle school or junior high at Southeastern when I came here. Um, we did the uneven bars. We did the parallel bars. We, um, we would go jump on a springboard and vault over a horse and do flips in the air over people on a mat. We suddenly became acrobats and superstars, we thought, because they believed in us. I would think my fondest memory of school would be the day I met Mr. and Mrs. Williams. Myself and a lot of my fellow classmates, I had lost one of our parents, a father, a mother. We were uneasy in our community as a black community, whether well, London school would still be open. So them introducing us to gymnastics and giving young kids an outlet was one of the greatest memories of my life. And it changed the direction that I probably would have grown up in. During that time, I met a lot of great teachers and Mr. Hairston that made the transition of school integration easier. After Mr. Hairston hired uh, Ms. Williams and Mr. Williams, that was a great fit because they understood the tension in the community not so much with the students, because we had gotten used to it, and after four or five years of being in class together, playing together, and interacting in the community, uh, that they brought along the parents to learn that this was gonna be a great thing, that we had to make it work, no matter how we felt outside of the schools. Here I am, you know, a little white kid, at a school that had been traditionally known as a black school, and our principal, was a black man, Mr. John L. Harrison. And for some of the town, that was like, oh no, wait a minute, how can this be? But for us, it was wonderful. I don't ever remember racial issues between the kids at London School. And of course, at Southeastern either when we got here. If they existed, I didn't know it. Mr. John L. Harrison, though, was a lot of the reason for that. He was a gentle, soft-spoken, meek and humble man. And you would think a man like that wouldn't be a good leader, but he was. He was still a firm leader, but his meekness and humility really did filter down to the students and first through the teachers because we all respected him greatly and his wife as well. 
I still remember what he said at the very end of that meeting. And I'd already noticed that the culture of this faculty was different than what I was used to. That these people were excited about getting back to work. They had missed their students and they were looking forward to seeing those kids that they hadn't seen all summer. Mr. Harrison, at the end of the meeting, he said, I wanna remind you of something. You asked for this job and you are working with some of the most important people in the world, the Walnut Cove children. He said, there's not a child on this, in this school that asked for you to be their teacher. You asked for the privilege of teaching them. So tomorrow morning, I want you to get up, look at yourself in the mirror, and then buckle your seatbelt and come to work, ready to make this the best year ever for these children. Because whenever you're making a decision, I want you to think about what's best for kids. And we did, because that's how he led the school. He set the tone. He created the culture in that school. And the teachers believed in him and believed that he knew what was best for kids. We trusted him because he trusted us and he respected us and we respected him. And as a result, all of our students were treated with respect. Even though this is the early 70s and there was a lot happening in our world at that time, it was a tough time. Um, but it wasn't a tough day at Walnut Cove Grammar because we all felt lucky to be there because that's what he told us we were. We were lucky and we felt that way. We'd well, like to welcome you to Southeastern State School. This is the 13th annual show of gymnastics. It is a show that takes a lot of hard work and dedication. I'd like to thank the physical education teachers here at Southeastern. I'm no longer really a part of that group, but I've always been proud to associate myself with them. They have done a superior job this year. They pulled this whole thing together. They've worked hard in class. They've worked well together, which is sometimes been a challenge. Jimmy Vine, Tina Whittington, Bobby Duncan, and Rick Williams. They People believed in us. They didn't see us as white kids or black kids, or we didn't really have any other cultures at that time in Walnut Cove. They didn't look at us that way. We were just children that they wanted to bless and children that they believed could do great things one day. I think that was a great benefit from Mr. and Mrs. Williams and Johnny L. Hurston that they made Walnut Cove the great place it is today. My favorite story was a few years ago, my husband and I went to Ingalls Grocery Store the Saturday before Christmas when Christmas was on a Sunday. So the, I tell you that to tell you that the parking lot was packed and it was crazy because people were buying their groceries. Christmas was the next day. So this guy comes running up and he was probably in his late forties and he throws his arm around my husband and hugs him and he says, coach, I've still got it. And my husband is 6'5", Rick's 6'5", and this guy's probably 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, and so Rick said, who is that? And about that time, this young man takes off and flies across the parking lot and does about 10 back handsprings as cars are pulling in. And I, I thought he was gonna get killed, but he didn't. And he came running back up, and the best part about this story is he looked at us and he said, you know what? That night, everybody clapped for me. And it had been probably 30 years, and he's had a very challenging adult life. Not everything has gone his way. He's had a lot of struggles, and probably there have been a lot of days that it hadn't been a real happy life for him. But that night, everybody clapped for him, and he still holds that close to his heart. So it made the whole uh, 18 years that we did that worthwhile to hear those kind of stories. And we call that building a success identity because a successful, a person that's successful acts like a successful person. And if we're building a failure identity by pointing out all the time what they're doing wrong or where their weaknesses are, 
we build that failure identity and a person that has a failure identity acts like a failure. So if we want people to be persistent and keep striving to be the best they can be, we have to help them find their success. And, and I think that's what we did. That's, we didn't know that's what we were doing, but I think that evidently is how that turned out. Your hard work from all your gymnasts and sound